Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters. Hoping for a miracle cure, John Kramer travels to Mexico for a risky and experimental medical procedure, only to discover the entire operation is a scam to defraud the most vulnerable. Armed with a newfound purpose, and the infamous serial killer uses deranged and ingenious traps to turn the tables on the con artists. Yes, folks, this is our Raw Reaction Review for Saw X. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Full Moon Features. If you love horror collectibles, make sure to check out Full Moon's Tiny Terrors. Stick around for more information at the end of the video, or go to the website in the link below. Yes, folks, it is that time. Uh, you know, I think when uh, we first reviewed the trailer for this, we thought that this was going to be a part of Splatterthon, but no, 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 no. They they shifted some things around, they made it happen, and yes, we are now talking about Saw X or Saw X uh right here at the tail end of september so nice little treat always like when things move up usually a pretty good sign and uh yeah i think um if you go back to our trailer review we we were you know relatively i guess as positive as you could be on the saw franchise from the trailer i mean i liked the energy that it had with the song and kind of the setup that we were going for um but you know it's no real secret that this franchise has kind of been uh well in kind of the gutter for a little while for most horror fans yeah i mean absolutely i think uh the word i usually use is redundant um it's just a lot of the same thing over and over again and you know i think when you look at something uh you know and i'm probably biased as we sit here with a michael myers as well as a um friday 13th um shirts on um, where you could say that about slashers, but I think sometimes slashers um, uh, mix it up a little bit, where as opposed to something like Saw becomes redundant and almost uh, tiresome when you're dealing with the subject matter of very graphic traps. Um, and really kind of, you know, you look at the original Saw, and I mean, for me, for my money, that's just absolutely a, a great film where you didn't see that ending coming it was something new it was something fresh at the time and i don't think any other installments have really been able to encapsulate what that original saw was um instead they kind of just leaned on those traps and really just you know i think they tried to connect story pieces and try to get that wow factor that the first one had because that's what the saw franchise became but you know it, you grow to expect it and it just does become redundant and that was kind of my hesitation with uh, Saw X here was, is, is there a reason that we're going to go back to the well one more time and do something different? And, you know, this one, it, what this takes place in between one and two, I believe, is what we mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe out. that's what we've uh, what we've deduced. Um, you know, and going into the John Kramer backstory a little bit and kind of he gets a chance, in a sense, to play more of a hero kind of character. And it's, you know, my hesitation with that was... We've seen it so, in so many different properties nowadays where every villain has a, has a shining light where they can be the hero at some point. And for me, um, my kind of hang up was, was this going to be an actually good story? Um, and, you know, I think that that's uh, a fair criticism, um, you know, the kind of going back and having the the hero be kind of the vi the previous villain or I guess the villain become the hero. Um, and, you know, I I kind of sit in this camp of just like i think that you could do it with some it would be awkward to do it with like a michael myers or a jason um but you know john kramer at the end of the day is is more of just a person um you know he's an engineer he's somebody who they uh they've established throughout this franchise is like you know he's just kind of uh a dude who's taking things you know the extra mile and of course because it's you know saw and it's a horror franchise a lot of these traps get really intricate and unbelievable and i think that this franchise has a hard time kind of um setting itself apart and doing something different because it kind of wants to try to play both sides where it's like yeah we have these crazy out of this world traps um and games but uh you know at the end of the day we're trying to be uh, a gritty kind of grindhouse cop drama or you know kind of have a little bit more of a softer side to john kramer and i think a lot of the movies in this series have struggled balancing that and i don't know uh, at least for me 
and I guess I'm setting us up on how this review is going to go. Um, I actually thought that this was uh, pretty enjoyable. I, I thought that this was a nicer way to balance the story. I liked having John Kramer be more at the forefront of this one. I thought that it was a way more interesting to see him kind of actually um, get revenge on people who kind of, you know, screwed him over. Is it a little bit like kind of out there and, you know, we got to tie a bunch of strings together just to get this to work? Absolutely. But all these movies are. Um, and does it really fall into that formula of at one point they do jump the shark and they're like, well, we got to make the bad guy badder than John Kramer. How do we do that? And they do do that. And we, we poked fun at it in the theater. You and I were giggling about it, but you know, at the end of the day, I got to sit here and say, compared to what we've had for, I want to say the last four films or so, um, this was definitely better than the other ones. This, this actually felt a lot closer to those first few Saw films. Um, you know, and it goes with my criticism probably with The Nun 2, um, where you set a low bar for a lot of the films. Hey, you know, as long as you do slightly better, it's going to be a better film. Um, and do, does Saw X do that? Certainly. Uh, most of the time, just because I have no idea and, and I can't differentiate a lot of the installments uh, from a story-wise. Um, does this fall as to one of my top favorite Saw films? No, not even close. Um, I think one and two, um, are more than adequate in comparison to this. Um, even like looking at something like Spiral, which I didn't really resonate with, and I do have to go back and rewatch that one. Uh, when you look at that one and, you know, it, we live in a, in a time nowadays where people come become infatuated with a lot of these serial killers and, you know, who, you know, someone can mimic it. And I think that is a more intriguing take than something like, um, taking the John Kramer story and trying to make him out to be some sort of hero, which I, I think anyone can have those instances uh, of, you know, a moment in time to be a hero. And like you said, yeah, there are a lot of stretches in this one. Um, Tobin Bell, it's no secret. I mean, he always puts on a stellar performance. I think he's in any of these um, installments. He's always great to see on camera. So, you know, if you're going to stock me up war on, um, to Tobin Bell screen time, you know, I'm not going to complain about it because the guy's a great actor. I think he's got a great handle on the John Kramer character. And I'm, that's not my criticism with this film at all. It's more so the stretches that they take, the leaps that they take to try and make this thing work. And then to try, you know, go back to that well and say, no, there's a story to tell. It, it feels like a cash grab um, where it's like, um, you know, I mean, it's hard to say that it's not, I feel. Um because you have to, we're, we're putting this in between one and two. I think we know what we did with this character um, by killing him off. We have to go back in time. We have to go back to when well, we have to put Tobin Bell in the John Kramer character. Because without him, the Saw franchise doesn't necessarily work. I think as we see where this is at, uh, without John Kramer uh, being a, you know, a facilitator in a sense, um, no one is really interested in seeing it. And judging by... Uh, the theater tonight, I don't know necessarily if a lot of people are intrigued by a Saw X. Um, so yeah, for me, I would say this was a big stretch um, to try and kind of get more out of the Saw story and to shoehorn uh, John Kramer back into it. I don't know if I would call this necessarily a cash grab. I feel like there was way more of um, an attempt here than there was for something like a jigsaw jigsaw feels like a cash grab because i don't know how much you remember of that but when they brought john kramer back that way um you know it's like he's just essentially back from the dead and you know they're trying to give you some roundabout way of him coming back like that felt very cash grabby as to where i i think that this one does try to make a solid attempt at giving a little bit more depth to the characters um and giving a little bit more insight to just kind of how he came about passing the torch to someone like an Amanda and you know why he decided to go a little deeper down the road uh than he was because it's like you know you see him make a choice and we're early enough into the series at this point to really see okay this is why he continued doing what he did this is this is another element that pushed him is it something that we need no I think the series is what it is but you know, if I'm looking at it on its own marks in comparison to what we've gotten before, 
I, I do see an attempt here to try to make this at least a little bit more uh, serious and a little bit more palatable than the last few. And I see that not only in just the the writing, but also I think that the, the direction was pretty strong in this. I thought that, you know, for the most part, uh, they did try to do a lot more interesting things uh, while also going back with the traps and just making at least the first few traps a little bit more um, back to basics. There wasn't any lasers, you know, cutting people's heads in half and doing anything like that. We, we really went back to, okay, you could feasibly see somebody stringing this together and torturing somebody with it. Well, looking at this one, and yeah, I'm not going to say that this was uh, a film where they just threw shit at a wall and saw what stuck. Um, I think this one more so in terms of a cash grab was like, no one really cares about the Saw franchise. What do we got to do to bring this back? And we got to bring John Kramer back and that'll get the butts in the seats. And I think that is the selling point here. I think um, most people are more so intrigued by the return of John Kramer in that story rather than uh another installment in the saw franchise um mm -hmm. and looking at it um there's no gas left in the tank in terms of where we go after really um all the saw installments we see it with jigsaw you see it with spiral they don't necessarily perform and a lot of people weren't necessarily happy with with that so it's kind of like okay let's shoehorn a story in in terms of when saw was in its heyday and we got to put tobin bell back into it because that's that conceptually that's what's going to get people back. And I think that's more so what we're trying to go with. And again, is a story anything that hasn't been told before? Maybe, you know, in the Saw franchise, now this is the first. But in terms of Hollywood and what we've been doing for the past 10 years, this is pretty by the book in terms of story. It's nothing new. It's nothing fresh. It's just something that we've seen before. We're just putting John Kramer in that instance. And, you know, for me... The writing's not terrible. I think that there are a, a few instances where I met with an eye roll. There's a point where we're trying to establish relationships so quick before we get into the instance. And we got to say, hey, I'm your drug dealer. And we got to actually verbalize that, even though the audience is totally aware of exactly what's happening. Um, and then once we get into the actual traps themselves, yeah, I didn't really have a problem with any of the traps. I think more so that's kind of, you know, other than probably being in complete shock of some of the elements that they're trying to have these these characters do um and never being able to actually achieve them it's like uh, you know it's a stretch but i mean i think that's the saw franchise and i think that more so this is going to be when we look back and again my brain doesn't have the capacity to try and differentiate every different installment because they all meld together the only standing point for this one is going to be hey that's the john kramer movie that's the one where we take him and we he has a chance to be a hero and that's really it and that's really what this uh film is kind of hanging its hat on and you know i think that i can sympathize with some of those criticisms for sure i definitely think that you know um i am going to be curious to see where this sits you know like you said here in a few years where you know this is going to stand as far as saw films go but you know i think that for a series that again i agree with you it ran out of gas you know, four or five films ago, realistically. And now it's kind of just been, you know, puttering along on E, uh, running on fumes. You know, I, I think that going back and taking the more simplistic approach here was uh, a much needed breath of fresh air, at least for my viewing. I, I, I found a lot more enjoyment in that. Now, is that going to offer any real rewatch value i don't think so and you know i i don't think that uh the saw films really do that that's why saw is not something that you know uh really sticks out with me as much you know like i, I like the halloween films uh you know for the setting they give the vibe they give um i like the friday the 13th films for the atmosphere and the character and everything like that and you know they have a lot of paper thin plots and stories of course but i i agree with you in the sense that the Saw movies don't necessarily have that. They have their own vibe and their own, you know, kind of atmosphere, but it's just not an atmosphere or a vibe that I really want to revisit all that often. And I think that really this was an attempt to bring a little bit more life, a little bit more nuance to it. And I, I see it. I think that they were successful in some aspects. Um, and, you know, for me, for having ground low expectations, 
um, you know, I think that it's it, it's definitely something I could walk away from and say, you know, I see why people are being so positive about it. And I, I was more positive about it. But, you know, at the end of the day, as somebody who I know isn't necessarily as impressed with the series and really wants to see it succeed and wants to see it do something, uh, you know, impressive and different, you want to you want to walk in there and be impressed. I totally get where you're coming from with that because yeah it's at the end of the day it is still a saw film by by the end of the day yeah but it, i just think it's better than the last few yeah and there's no disagreement on that end uh mm -hmm. my whole more so argument is that you set such a low bar and yeah i yeah, think it's, it's easy, easy to, to jump over um but you know i'm not gonna say that this is a, a total trash film i think i'm more so being a little more harsh on it right now just because uh, when you pump up that runtime to two hours, and um, I haven't sat to a, through a two-hour saw film in a while, if that exists, I'm not sure about the runtimes on those. Uh, but when you're asking me to come back for Saw X, and we're going to pump it up to a two-hour film, and you know, you got to give me a reason. Yeah, uh, you got to give me at least some sort of unique reason. And um, I don't think that this con conceptually was enough there for me to say, okay. Uh, we this definitely need this installment, and that's why I think I'm being a little more harsh on it. I'm not saying that this isn't by by any means a terrible film. It's just one of those ones that you know I don't think we needed. I don't know necessarily if it really adds that much to the John Kramer character. I don't think I was really clamoring for more uh, more backstory to the John Kramer character. I love Tobin Bell. I think he's great, um, but I love that kind of just overseer, that facilitator. Uh, the guy that when you play me he's going to deliver those lines and it's going to be eerie as hell and i'm going to be you know intrigued and i think you know again looking at this where and i think you know all these franchise horror franchises have this issue where that those first that first installment is so strong and then we we struggle to kind of conceptually get back to that route i think there's I think the difference is that we have our Halloweens, we have our Friday the 13th, we have our Nightmare on Elm Streets. Those ones, for me, are way more enjoyable to turn on and just have a great afternoon with, whereas I cannot turn on a Saw movie for an afternoon and watch people be tor tortured. Gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, I think uh, at the end of the day for me on this one, I'm, I'm probably going to give this a recommend. I think it just crosses that line for me. I think that as for horror fans, this is definitely um, a treat in a way, just because it's like, you know, Saw, whether you like it or not, has been around the block for a while. I think it has earned its keep in the sense of just being in the public consciousness. And, you know, again, I think that although the bar is low, I do see the uh, attempt here from the writers and from the team to give us a little something more. Um, I think that really uh, what, what might hinder this uh, is kind of like my closing statement uh, going forward or just the series has been for a while is that, you know, I think that saw in and of itself is a very smart and fun idea in a, in a very self-contained film like that first one. And I don't necessarily know if it needed 10 films. I don't think it needed it at all, but you know, the fact that they came back and they said, you know what, we're going to do our best. We're going to try to really give you guys something, um, you know, a little bit more meaty than the last few, I, I, I see the attempt and, you know, I tip my hat to it again. Is this something I'm going to pick up on Blu-ray? Probably not. But, you know, if it's on streaming and I feel like watching, you know, one of the Saw sequels, uh, this would probably be uh, one of my picks before I throw on like a Jigsaw or something else. You know what I mean? Like this is this would be in that running. And that's why I give it a low recommend. It's just on the border of proceed with caution. But, you know, I think that for the most part, this is uh, this is at least competent enough for me to walk out and say some positive things. Yeah. And I think for me, I where I fall on this one, I think I'm going to say more so proceed with caution on this one. Um, you know, looking at some of the Saw franchises, especially when you have uh, some strong standouts like those first two installments, um and you know looking at this one especially trap wise i think uh maybe there was one trap in here that really stuck out in my head to be you know pretty graphic and really have you invested whereas a lot of the other ones seemed a little more underwhelming for me um whereas you know those first two installments i think have some really fun stuff um and you know we're gearing up for the the october month the halloween season here 
Uh, there's going to be some pretty strong um, releases, at least hopefully, um, streaming, <laughs> um, as well as maybe in theatrically. We'll see what happens there. Um, so it should be a fun time. I don't know necessarily if Saw X is going to be the one that you're going to want to run out to the theater to spend some time with, especially if you own a library of the entire Saw collection. I think there might be a few better traps to just kind of spend the day with. Uh, but, you know, if you're a big hardcore Saw fan, um, I think you're probably, regardless of reviews, you're going to go out and... Uh, Your tickets and, uh, are already sold. Yeah, you're already going to have a fun time with this. So, you know, by all means, head out to the theater and uh, get you some more of uh, the, the jo John Kramer, uh, Billy, and uh, Jigsaw Killer. So, uh, I'll say proceed with caution, but, you know, I think maybe a real hardcore Saw lover will love this one. Absolutely. And uh, I think that at the end of the day, guys... Luke is just butthurt because uh, he didn't get a Billy cup like I did. Look look at this. I can. <sighs> Merchandise. There we are. That is king. That is always key to make me love a film. Uh, yeah, no. So that's our review of Saw X, guys. Um, again, uh, I really wanted to be blown away by this. I think that I was impressed, but again, not blown away. It's I don't know if it's going to reboot that franchise, but and uh, Luke, it was more a little bit better than before the the previous ones, but you know about what you expected. I think is probably the way to surmise that. But other than that, we've been uh, in the midst of Fantastic Fest. We got a lot of great stuff going on uh, on the channel with that. We've got a lot of really cool movies that we've been checking out. Luke saw one called The Uncle that he really enjoyed. Uh, that really messed me up. And then, uh, you know, we also saw a couple of winners like um, Last Stop in Yuma County. Uh, we did, you mentioned streaming next month. We did check out uh, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, which I think we both were pretty surprised with how much we enjoyed yeah. that one. So uh, definitely check those reviews out. A lot of them are early. So, you know, you're getting some raw reactions, some raw thoughts on just uh, some movies that you might not get to see for a few months. But, hey, it's been fun. It's been great. We still got a lot of stuff uh, coming down the pipeline as far as those go. And, uh, yeah, we got a lot of great stuff on the horizon. And, you know, regardless, uh, especially with our sponsor, Full Moon Features. Yes, we're working with them, talking about their Tiny Terrors line, which is also coming in October. Uh, we're going to be getting a closer look at those figurines very soon. Uh, they did drop a trailer this week, so you guys can check it out and uh, see a little bit of a closer look from those with Charles Band. Uh, just go to the Full Moon Features uh, YouTube page, and uh, you'll be able to see that. As well as Luke talked about their new film, uh, Amy uh, the Visitor, which looks absolutely wonderful. Um, but yeah, guys, it's going to wrap us up here. So until next time, I am Dylan Newell. And I'm Luke Janesco. And remember, stay scared. <laughs>